Now, how can you tell what you're going to run out of first? A naive person here would say that we would run out of everything at the same time because we're starting with the same amounts. But that doesn't make sense. It's true that we have the same amount of bread and, and uh, slices of salami, but we're using up the bread twice as fast. That's the significance of this number two over here. So what are the two considerations that you need to figure out who the limiting reagent is? Well, if you have less of something, that will tend to make it the limiting reagent. If you start with less of something, that tends to make it the limiting reagent. If you only got one egg in the refrigerator, there's a good chance you're going to run out of eggs before you run out of, run out of other things. But that's not enough. You also have to look at how fast you're using them up. And that's the stoichiometric coefficients. We use up the bread here twice as fast as the salami. So if you only have one egg in the refrigerator, but you only eat an egg once a month, maybe you won't run out of that first. Ah, well, it'll probably go bad in the meantime. But anyway. <laughs> um, so, uh, so those are the two considerations. So in many cases, you should be able to figure out the limiting reagent by common sense. We shouldn't have to do these conversion ratios here to see we're starting with the same amounts of both of these, but we're using up bread twice as fast. So the bread has to be the limiting reagent. And as soon as we figure that out, we know what's going to be the change in the bread? Minus 10. Because the limiting reagent is going to be used up when the reaction goes to completion. It's not obvious yet what the change in the salami is going to be. Well, it's kind of obvious, but not as obvious as this number over here. But what is the formal and official way to find the limiting reagent? Well, that's what we did over here. Ask yourself, what's the maximum amount of product I could make out of one starting material? And what's the maximum amount of product I could make out of the other starting material? And whichever one makes less product is the one you're going to run out of first. We have enough bread here to make five sandwiches, but we only have enough salami to make ten. Uh, well, we have enough salami to make ten sandwiches, but only enough bread to make five sandwiches. So we can see from that that the bread is the limiting reagent. So I don't think that this was strictly necessary for the sandwich equation because this was such a common sense and ordinary equation. But this is the official mathematical way to figure out the limiting reagent. In many cases, this is the best way to do it because uh, that can be confusing. So again, we have to use our conversion ratios. You convert each pro um, starting material into product and ask how much product could you get from each of those if it were the limiting reagent. Um, well, here we could only get five sandwiches out of the bread, so that's the limiting reagent. That's what we're running out of first. And then this number, maybe we should now cross out. We're never going to get all 10 of those sandwiches because we're going to, to run out of uh, ingredients first. This was how much we could get if there was excess bread. That turns out not to be excess bread. So of course, if one thing is the limiting reagent, the other thing could be called it, uh, the reagent that's an excess, mm -hmm. unless they both happen to be used up at the exact same time. OK, so this is the process for figuring out the limiting reagent. When do you need this approach for reactions that go to completion? We would use a different approach for a reaction that goes to equilibrium. Because when the reaction goes to equilibrium, you don't use up either of the starting materials. It stops before it gets to completion. Well, we can talk about that at a later date. <laughs>